friends, welcome back to the Bloom and Grow YouTube show. Bloom and Grow YouTube show. Today I am home for 12 hours at my family home in White Plains, New York, and I wanted to introduce you to my mom. Hi. Hi, plant people. You might have heard her on episode 20 of the Bloom and Grow Radio podcast on how to grow tomatoes. My mom is the most epic gardener. She taught me pretty much everything I know about my little balcony garden, so I thought it would be fun to give you a tour of Fiella Farm. So, mom, how many years have you had Fiella Farm? Uh, we moved Fiella Farm to the front. This is our third year. Okay. in the front yard and right. every year it's bloomed and grown <laughs> and it gets bigger and bigger <laughs> so what's the layout here walk us through before we take a walk of what your thoughts were okay so this year I started a new bed that curves along our walkway in the spring we have a beautiful bed of irises and Queen Anne lace right over here then we continue on and we have my marvelous bean patch. In my bean patch, I grow cranberry beans. Those are so beautiful. I love the color of those. And then I have different color string beans. Here's some purple. We've eaten most of them. We've <laughs> Here's a purple string bean. Here, let's pick one of each and we can have a little photo. Here's a yellow string bean. So one plant like this will give me about 10 beans. I have purple and... They've exploded with growth. We've had just like bushels of beans. Bushels of beans. <laughs> so aside from the bean patch, which you'll notice I have these nifty little... Um, Trell like little baby tr trellises. Baby trellises that hold my beans. Um, we're going to be pulling these bean plants today because they're pretty tired. And on the side of the bean plant, come here, we have kale, cabbage, and cauliflower. So kale, cabbage, and cauliflower. And then also, what you haven't seen, we've been pulling weeds and staking tomatoes all day. We've showered since, so you wouldn't know it. Right. But we have six of these of weeds that we pulled today. So gardening. <laughs> It's hard work. <laughs> yeah. As I was pulling the weeds, I noticed I have a wild tomato growing. Look at that! I did not plant him. He's been seeded by either an animal or the wind. Probably the rabbits that eat the tomatoes and then they bring the seeds over. That's amazing. So that's that. So this is cabbage, kale, Cauliflower. marigolds to keep the bugs away right. and the um, animals away beans and zucchini my daughter brought the uh, spanish strawberries and if you come down here you'll know that an animal has eaten one uh-oh these <laughs> animals well, they keep coming for your stuff mom there's so much here I, I got i have an herb garden that's right in front of the front doorstep because i don't want to have to walk too far when i'm cooking to grab my herbs so i have cilantro which is actually in bloom and you can eat it completely cilantro is also these pretty white flowers coriander it's also known it's as gorgeous. coriander um, it does give you a pretty flower so you could still eat that um, but the interesting thing about the cilantro is that it has self seeded itself on the other side of my yard and you didn't plant it over I there. I did not plant it over there. Here is the sage that keeps coming back. And you have some of Nani's, are so my grandma's here, sage, right? I have sage that I planted myself. It's just a beautiful smell. And then I have a very thick, round sage plant that's in there, which is my mother's plant from her garden in Queens. This plant has to be about 50 years old. It keeps on coming back. Yeah, she took it from my grandparents' house and planted it in our old house, right? And then planted, planted it, here, it here, right? Right. So it's lived in three different three gardens different and it just keeps coming back. And um, I have rosemary over here. I have sage. I have oregano. Then I have more weeds. I have weeds so many weeds. <laughs> I have oregano. I have mint. I did not plant this mint. But this mint is taking over 
two feet of my yard. Anyway, on this Darn side, it. I have thyme, I have basil, I have tarragon. This is tarragon, German thyme, and I have lemon thyme. Some of the thyme seeds itself in between the pavers here that I pulled out. I'm trying to clean this up today. Today this I is the yarn we were um, tying we staked tomatoes all of our with. tomatoes today just with simple yarn. So we tied all of the tomato plants to some big stakes over there. Which you'll Let's see. go check them out. Now we are approaching the lettuce, the heavy duty part of my garden. Yes. I said in the in the spring I go to Home Depot and I buy little leaves of lettuce and I try to pick different colors and plant them as if they were different flowers in my front yard. This becomes an edible arrangement of beauty. You really do use edible plants as landscaping. I do use You really do. Plants. This is entirely edible and it's probably the prettiest thing on our block. Which yeah, perfect. people stop all the time. Yeah. So I start with marigolds here, and then I have different types. I have cabbage, I have green leaf lettuce. This is actually romaine. I have red leaf lettuce. I have um, chicory. I have red that leaf lettuce. That one's really pretty. Chicory is very pretty. I have four eggplants in there. Notice a little eggplant purple flower. So hopefully this will bring me a little eggplant. Now I'm going to go into the depths Now of we've it. got the troublesome zucchinis. Now we have zucchinis. Zucchinis love to grow big leaves and I plant zucchinis in the garden for texture purposes and the beautiful um, trumpet of orange yes. flower that they produce. Now the flowers are only open in the morning. By the afternoon they close and conserve. And open. Italians like to stuff them with cheese and fry them you can if they the fall flowers. off. Yeah, they're delicious. You can open them. You have to you have to get them in the morning. You have to pick them early in the morning. Now, here is an example of a little zucchini. Oh, you've got one growing. And the flower is still attached. Look at that. That's beautiful. But if these flowers fall, the zucchini, here's another one over here. Here's another one over here. If the flowers fall, the zucchini doesn't happen. And then behind them, you've got all of the tomato plants. Then back here, we have our Spanish tomato plants. Actually, we have a lot of zucchinis on this plant. This is a happy plant. So we have tomato plants, Spanish tomato plants in the front, American tomato plants in the back. And my tomato plants in the back actually have tomatoes on them already, the cherries. That's why I think it's so fun to grow cherry tomatoes because you get rewarded so much quicker than when you have to wait for a big tomato to develop, you know? And let's see. <gasps> Yay! Yay! You want to taste? You taste it. Tell us how you taste. Perfection. <laughs> delicious. You can see there's, we probably have a hundred little green cherry tomatoes amidst all of the different to tomatoes. Go. Almost ready. I have azaleas in front of them, holly to the side of them, hydrangea to the end of them. And this section of the garden where she packs the most punch with putting all the edibles is also the part that gets the most under, Sun. uh, sorry, direct sunlight. Right. So we were pulling weeds at noon and we were dripping in dripping. sweat. I mean, this is full Full sun. All I the also time. have peonies back here in the spring. Yeah. Now come down here. This is my pepper patch. I have some green peppers. Look at that. They look great. They look amazing. I got baby green bells here. I'm going to have some red. Gorgeous. So we've got peppers and then I want to round it up by checking out my mom's oasis that she built over here. So the fun part I think about this part of the garden is it did not exist last year. So mom has gotten so, or two years ago. Two years ago. So Actually, this was all lawn. It was all lawn. We got mom a rototiller for Christmas or for your birthday? 
Mother's Day last for Mother's year. Day and she cut with the rototiller an entirely new bed here which is more ornamental flowers but she's growing the most incredible sunflowers if you see that's a sunflower that's a sunflower that's a sunflower there's probably 50 sunflowers in here um yeah 70 and then it's a wall fence of flowers yeah it's so beautiful it's just such a joyous part of the garden and here's something very interesting that I learned. We are going to take a tour of my sunflower problem. So I have... Tell us. I have some animals that like to eat sunflowers. Yes. I'm not happy with them. No. So let's go see what I did. All right. So now we need to talk about the sunflowers and the animals that are eating my mother's sunflowers. Yes. So I have chipmunks or rabbits that like to nibble at the bottom of my sunflower and they, <laughs> I wake up in the up. morning and they crack it in half so I take electric tape and I tape it up and shockingly, look at this did they nibble bloomed. that it blooms yeah the chipmunks will run right up the stem of a sunflower to eat the flower the look chipmunks. how tall these guys are and they're not even fully grown yet the little flower you can see the little flowers at the top but they're going to still grow so much yeah. more and then here we have watermelon in this patch here too they're gonna bloom so we so have yeah, the anguria watermelon we've got some over here it's such a pretty leaf it's gonna be 20 feet long yeah they're leaves. crazy vines they climb yeah. all over the entire thing so here you can see my sunflowers and my Montauk daisies are actually choking my whole garden with flour. But again, look, these animals keep on biting on my sunflower and I get oh. mad at them. But if How you rude. put a little electric tape, they continue to grow. <laughs> so fun fact, just slap some electric look, tape again. on your sunflower and you're good as new. Again, again. There's electric yellow tape. electric tape over all of these sunflowers. This is hilarious. And they're erect and standing so tall. <laughs> That's great. So that's a little trick for sunflowers. If you take a picture here, you really see how I create a wall of sunflowers. So when we open our door, we're greeted with bright and sunny faces every morning. Every morning. So mom, thank you for this tour. I hope we can do, there you are. <laughs> I hope we can do a garden update maybe in a month. I might not be around, but maybe my sister will do it, fingers yeah. crossed. But um, thanks so much for teaching me how to bloom and grow. You're welcome. So You're proud. Welcome. <laughs> Keep going, everyone.